What is up, folks? This week, we are jumping on the other end of the spectrum from what we did last week. Last week, we looked at my top gear investments of 2020, some pretty large purchases in there, but things that I saw were proving to me that they were actually making dog times money rather than just, you know, sitting in the truck and not really working. This time, what we're going to do is we're going to look at some companies that are more known for being budget-friendly options for all of my fellow DIY indie filmmakers out there in the YouTube world. So these are all companies that I actually legit have purchased or used sometime in the past. And so I decided let's rank these companies in terms of where I think they land. So let me show you the little spreadsheet I created here and I'll show you how I'm ranking them in, in four different tiers. So the first one here is labeled in the van. And this is for products that I've tried, I love, I feel that they stand the test of time. I'm pretty rough and tough when it comes to working on set because you know we're working with very small crews and very short time. So we're kind of grabbing and running around, not running, but working quickly but efficiently, right? But you know, we don't have time to be very delicate with our gear, right? So these are products that I think are pretty awesome and they also have a lot of good features and I just feel benefit the company. So yeah, they're in the Dog Times Productions van as we speak, or maybe they have been at one time or something that I have tested out and would approve to be in the van, right? And then you'll notice our next level down here is called Does It Last? So this is a one of those categories where it's not quite a hundred percent, right? So maybe something that's just maybe be off that it just needs that little bit more of 10% to bring it up to where I feel it would be 100% reliable uh, on a true day-to-day -day working uh, DIY set, right? Something where I say, oh, this is budget friendly, but maybe it's just a tad too budget friendly, you know? And then that brings us to the third tier, which I labeled for learning. Now, these are products that I feel like are okay and are really good and easily attainable because they are so cheap. It'll be something that you can learn with, whether it's a monitor or a lighting fixture, but it's something that you'll have to anticipate knowing you're going to be replacing later on down the line and sooner than later, right? So maybe you could only get a year or two out of this product, maybe not even a whole year. So that's just things where I thought was good, but whoa, whoa way off the mark for, you know, taking on to a real world set, uh, even if it is low budge DIY style, right? Now the last tier I've labeled stay away. These are for companies that I just, <laughs> Every time I see their products or I have tried their products, it just makes me cringe a little bit. So I feel like I will be maybe offending a few companies here today in this video. So I do apologize in advance, but you know, I don't make my videos for companies, right? I make my videos for the people. And it's kind of how this whole channel even started to begin with, just sharing what's going on with me on my own little DIY journey, right? These are all companies that I've actually tried and tested their products. So just keep that in mind. For example, you wouldn't find uh, the company Feel World in this video because I feel that that they are a budget-friendly company, but I just personally have never tried any of their products. So it wouldn't be fair to me to just be grabbing every single company out there. So it's not just random, right? These are companies I actually have experience with. The first one here I have is Camvate. Um, okay. So I've tried a lot of Camvate products. One of the most recent ones I got, it's actually on the camera right now. It's this interesting little quick release thing. It kind of reminded me of the wooden camera base plate that they make for the Red Komodo. It looked a little similar to that, you know, minus the, the rosettes and the dovetail. And that. I mean, obviously, you know, we're talking low budget. Camvate make lots of products. I do find them interesting. I'm actually kind of liking the little uh, quick release base plate with the 15 millimeter rod clamp. Why I got that, I found it interesting because it's a quick release with the 15 millimeter rod clamp already attached so it's all one piece whereas if you saw my best AKS for the Komodo video a while back where I was stacking a nicey rig QR plate on top of a small rig 15 millimeter rod base plate so this kind of takes the clunkiness of using two different tools and Camvate have provided this one tool right so I just say that because that's the most recent Camvate thing that I've purchased I purchased that product Camvate have never sent me anything they've never reached out to me so uh, you don't have to worry about that but um I have used quite a bit uh, different Camvate products in the past. Um, I do like them. I think they're a solid company. However, they're always just a little off for me, right? There's just something just not quite making it, like we said, that other 10%. So for those reasons, I am going to put Camvate in the uh, not quite there category, right? So they're not quite 100%. I know I was calling it not quite 100, but does it last not quite 100? You get it. It's, it's the same thing. Same difference in, in my head. Uh, Celine's, uh, I think it's pronounced Celine's, maybe Celine's, Celine's. 
uh, something like that. So we, okay, Celine's, it's, it's an interesting thing. I have a few of their products. They make a lot of different like photography stuff, grip style stuff. I purchased one of their five in one. They're kind of like the big ones, the five by seven, you know, uh, flex fills. At, at first it was really nice, pretty, it felt like good quality, even the little pouch it came in felt good. It was a good quality zipper. It had uh, interesting handles on it, which I thought was cool. And the quality seemed to be pretty good. And at first I was like, yeah, Celine's, this is a cool company. Uh, and then I purchased one of their C-Stands, and then that's when things went kind of sour for me. The C-Stand uh, was spring-loaded. <laughs> now, that is a highly dangerous thing. I, I would not recommend anyone have a C-Stand that is spring-loaded. Literally, when because I, I bought it brand new because I was in dire need of a C-Stand. Usually, you can pick them up here for quite cheap in LA on the used market, but uh, it was literally, I just needed it last second, so I just ordered one for next-day delivery right away and just went with the Celine's company. Why? Because of the price. And when it got here, I took it out of the box, and it just... Phew, and it, it, it was so spring-loaded, it almost took off my head, right? So uh, I, that is why you don't really see spring-loaded C-stands on professional filmmaking sets, right? So uh, for any of you that, that have seen those kind of spring-loaded C-stands, uh, definitely stay away from those. Those are not cool. It's a super light C-stand, but it's just weird. It's spring-loaded. It has these weird knuckles on it. Um, so for those reasons alone, I'm going to put them in the stay-away category. Also, the flex fill did not stand the test of time. Um, the handles almost broke off quite early on. In, in its career. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I will just say like, sorry, Celine's, but uh, your, your, your products aren't quite a uh, industry standard, even for a DIY low budge guy. So the next company is Axoon. Um, Axoon uh, have a weird kind of relationship with Axoon. Uh, I started out, I purchased their, the first Cine Eye, you know, and I did a full review video of it on here on the channel. Um, and it was cool. I actually really dig that little, the first little Cine Eye. And then um, Holly Land sent me their Mars 300S to test out. And then Andy Cine sent me their Ben Box to test out. And we did that big video. And we saw in that video, Axoon, Axoon blew uh, Holly Land and, and Ben Box out of the water, right? So I was like, wow, that's pretty impressive because of the low latency and, and even it, it could go out of sight uh, at a further distance. And just an interesting product for, for what it was, and especially for the price. And I guess Axoon saw those videos and then so they sent me the Cine Eye 2 Pro, right? And when we first saw, were testing that out here on the channel, you know, we brought uh, Thomas in uh, on the video and my friend Omar. So I wanted like to do a interesting dolly shot on him, on our actor. And so I had Thomas pull focus because that's what he does. He, he, he's a DP, but he also works quite frequently as a first AC just as much as he works as a DP, right? So he has a lot of experience. So I thought it'd be fun to get his opinion on it. Now, when that was first sent to me, that was still kind of in beta mode. So uh, the firmware wasn't that good. And then, you know, there was that weird audio feedback because it transmits audio. And so in that video, you know, it kind of shined like mm, maybe this you know, this Cine I Mark II Pro from Axoon isn't that hot, right? But, you know, I held on to it because it did have such low latency compared to the other units that I had, such as the 300S from Hollyland and the Andy Cine Benbox, right? Axoon is a pretty solid company with some nice uh, reps that work for them, and they would contact me uh, pretty frequently on Instagram every time that they updated the firmware for that Cine I Mark II Pro. So I just kept updating the firmware. And when you do it, you have to make sure you update the firmware on not only the receiver, but also the transmitter. And um, and it's been getting more solid with every single firmware update. So, you know, I got to say, I've been using this Axoon Cine I Mark II Pro a lot. Uh, we used it on a music video shoot. I used it on five different commercials that we shot that are, uh, you know, they're actually airing on Hulu right now. So uh, we used it on some pretty like high-end clients for dog time. So we took the Axoon Cine I Mark II Pro on those sets with us and it, it didn't fail us on any of those sets that, you know, were high stakes. And it's still on the AKS as I speak. But all in all, it, I will definitely, for those reasons, I'm putting Axoon in the, it's in the van tier. So they are definitely going in number one. Okay, so Andy Cine is the next one on the list here, and they, uh, this is another interesting one. They send me a lot of gear. The reps are all really nice. Um, they send me Christmas gifts even. Last Christmas, they sent me uh, something that had nothing to do with, with cameras at all. So it was just kind of like a thank you for, you know, making the, the review videos that I, that I do for them. Um, so uh, they're an interesting company. They have really good uh, customer service uh, and their products are actually really good. The Ben Box was a pretty cool little device. Uh, I thought it was really solid for what it was and it even had better latency than the, than the Mars 300S, right? Um, and we saw that in the video. I'm not just, you know, making these things up. The latest monitor from them with the built-in dummy battery on the back that I recently did a video on. I mean, they got some pretty cool products. Um, but however, 
there, like I said, there's going to be some that aren't just quite there for me, and that's where Andy Cine falls in. So for those reasons, they are going into the second tier, which is Does It Last, or uh, better known as Not Quite 100, right? Like, it's not quite there yet. Andy Cine, I do apologize in advance, because I know, like, they're a cool company. Like, I have a pretty solid uh, ongoing relationship with them. Uh, just because every time they have a new piece of gear out, you know, they send it my way from to get my opinions on it and demo it and everything. Nothing paid or anything like that. Don't get to, don't get crazy about it. But um, but but at the same time, you know, I, I have to be honest here and say, like, to me, there's always just something that's just a little bit off. For instance, uh, just thinking off at of their latest monitor that I did the review of here. I don't know if it's called the A6S Pro or whatever it was. Um, but the one with the built-in uh, Sony L series battery on the back for for a wireless transmitter. For instance, that. That monitor was literally only uh, really made to go with the Hollyland Mars 300S, right? Because it, that little transmitter unit doesn't pull as much power as the Axoon Cine I Mark II Pro. And we saw that in the review video, right? It just, it's pulling too much power. So, you know, for those reasons, you know, it's just like, it's like, eh, it was cool. It was a good idea, but it didn't quite make the mark, right? It didn't quite make it to being in the van. <laughs> But I certainly don't want anyone to get it twisted. I, I do still really do enjoy Andy Cine products. Just because you're going in the number two tier doesn't mean anything bad at all. It's still good stuff. I still have that monitor from Andy Cine. It's just it's it's just missing that last little ingredient. Do you know? Okay, the next company in the folder here was Foca. Now, Foca actually makes some pretty cool stuff. I first was introduced to them through the follow focus units, and we went through a couple different of those videos here on the channel. And I still love that that latest one. Uh, what is it, the 500 Mark III? something like that. Uh, that's a really good follow focus for what it is and how much it is. And the price has gone down even lower since I did the review video on it last year. It's a solid unit. I still have it in my AKS kit. Speaking of which, we do have this monitor that they sent me <laughs> recently to check out. So this is the C50S and this is a 2000 nit monitor. So I have been testing this out for the past week or so. Uh, I've still got some time I want to be with it before, you know, we, we share it with all of you. But if it's anything, uh, what I've been noticing of it so far is it's actually really dang cool. If you guys saw the the video I did on the Foca A50 TLS or whatever it was, it's actually a really solid little unit. They're like perfect low budge options to like a small HD or something like that. So yeah, but talking specifically about the products themselves, I would put them in the same category as Camvate, right? It's like, it, does it last? Like how well will it do day in and day out on a real working set, do you know? Um, so for those reasons, Foca, you are going in the does it last uh, number two tier. Next we have Godox. Now Godox are an interesting company. If you guys follow the channel, you know they recently sent me the, what is it, the Godox S30 kit, the whole kit. Um, pretty awesome light kit. It's like, a, I don't know, like a twelve dollars or $1,300 light kit, something like that. I went on a gung-ho journey. You all remember, I, I decided to get a little cast together. I wrote a little five-page script and I was like, yes, we're going to see if we can use only this Godox S30 kit to light this little five-page scene. Um, we, we managed to pull it off okay, you know, all things considered. I did use some other grip gear like negative fill and some ultra bounce and stuff like that, but I was actually pretty impressed with the products. I'm actually using two of the Godox S30s right now even. So what's giving me this little edge light right here is one of the Godox S30s with the honeycomb grid and diffusion on it with the little, they have these little baby soft boxes. And then what's giving us this Dog Times Gobo here is another Godox S30 because I ended up picking up a second uh, projector spotlight attachment. I love these little lights. I think they're cool. I literally used them on a little uh, cooking show where I was the gaffer on just a, a few days ago. So. I'm using the lights all the time, and I mainly just use them for what they're doing right now. Little little accent lights, background lights, little edge light, just little stuff like that. They're perfect little units, and they're when you combine them with those spotlight projector attachments, they're really awesome. Um, I've also been on sets where I was the DP on, and some of the other guys brought their Godox units, so I have used some of their other bigger Fresnels, um, and they're actually pretty dang decent. You know that they're equally as powerful as my 120D. You know the units that they had. I can't remember. I think it was the 60 or something like that. It's called so. Uh, I've always been impressed with the with the Godox products. For those reasons, Godox is going to be in the number one tier of throw it in the van. Next is Hollyland. Now, Hollyland are a pretty solid company. Um, they they make solid products, in my opinion. The 300S was a it was a good product, right? Just because that some of the other low budge options are, you know, better latency or maybe, you know, they, you know, the, you know, the, the, we saw the video. If you haven't, I'll have a link to it down in the description below. They're good, right? I 
I like the build quality of Hollyland products. Um, I, I like the new mics. I'm using their little Lark 150 mic right now to record this. Now, granted, it is being fed into the Sound Devices Mix Pre 3, but still, you know, I'm using their, you know, the Lark 150 kit, and I did a whole review video on that just recently, actually. I like their products. I really do. But however, Hollyland just aren't quite there for me, just based on the things that I've used of them, right? Now, maybe in the future, uh, the, they'll send me a product that is awesome, and maybe a product that some of you use. And you're like, well, you haven't tried this yet. I'm sure it's awesome. It's just, I can't speak to it because I've never used it before. I'm only going off of the things that I have used. And I think that if you're someone that is in your first or second year, yeah, you would probably be looking at something like the Lark 150. You would probably be looking at something like the Mars 300S because that is a low budget enough option for you to get your hands on, right? But at the end of the day, keep in mind that I'm putting Hollyland in the number two tier of does it last? Because for me, Hollyland's cool, but it, they're not that cool, right? So you're, they're just not quite there. They're not quite 100, right? Starting to get stacked up in the does it last category, that not quite 100 category, but that's okay. Hey, that's pretty good. If a low budget company can get in that number two tier, to me, that's that's pretty stellar, you know? Next up, we have Kupo. Now, Kupo, if you don't know about Kupo, they make a lot of awesome grip gear. They are kind I put them on the list because to me, they are like the poor man's modern student studio equipment or like the poor man's Matthews grip equipment, right? That's really what Kupo is, right? They are a more uh, affordable, budget-friendly option to get your, if you're buying new, right? If you're buying new, I would say maybe look at Kupo. And I have quite a few of their products. I got their grip heads. I got um, C-stand arms. I got um, scissor clamps for, for the office ceilings. I got a lot of random Kupo stuff and I love all of it. It's all solid. It's it's durable. It lasts. I, it lives in the van, right? So you already know Kupo is going to be in that top tier, right? It's in the van as we talk. I'm using a lot of it for the grip gear going on here right now for this little setup. I use it all the time. It's solid gear, and if you're buying new grip gear, then Kupo is something you may want to check out. Um, however, I will say, before you go buying grip gear, it's always good to look in your local used markets, because a lot of my grip gear I find through Facebook market. Companies that I would look out for is like Avenger, Matthews, Modern. Um, but if you want to buy new, I would check out Kupo first because they got some really solid stuff. So for that reason, Kupo is going in the top of in the van. Now, the next company is, I almost didn't include them because I felt like, you know, they're not really low budge in terms of a lot of these companies. But then again, some people might say Kupo isn't really that low budge either. It just depends on what you believe, but we'll just cut right to the chase. I'm talking about Nanlite, right? So Nanlite is, I think, an awesome company. If you saw last week's video, my top gear investments of 2020, the Pavo tubes are no joke. I'm literally using two of the four footers right now for my key light, right? So I love Nanlite. They go on every shoot with me ever since I bought the tubes. Nanlite have never sent me anything, right? This is just a company that I found on my own, invested in, and I love it. I have six of their Pavo tubes, and this is a Pavo tube right here, right there. That's a little baby one, little 10 inch, uh, I don't know what it is, a 6C, whatever they call it. It's got a little A crate grid on it, right? So I love them. I love using the tubes. They go on every job with me. So for those reasons, Nanlite is definitely in the dog times van, right? They are number one to me now, but some people would argue, are they low budge? Well, now, if you compare them to something like Aperture, then yes, I think they are. I think they are definitely a affordable option to Aperture. Right, in my opinion. So for those reasons, Nanlite is in the van. It's always been the dog times van, so it's staying at number one. The next company is Niwer. Oh man, Niwer is, I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, it is a stay away from. I apologize, Niwer, but I'm just not into your company. I'm not into your products. St stuff I bought, you know, in back in year one, you know, things like map boxes, follow focuses, it, it, it's it's atrocious, it's cringeworthy. It's stuff that doesn't even make sense, right? The map box they make doesn't even make sense. It, it's, it's, it doesn't make sense. It's just flags. It's flags on a little, it's all plastic. Like, there's just so many like Niwer C-stands. Oh man, they're cringeworthy. Now, I will admit I do have a Niwer C-stand uh, and that's because, you know, I have lots of C-stands and I got it for really dirt cheap on the used market. So you know it's bad. You know you know you're hard up when you're buying uh, newer products in the used market, right? But but hey, you know, it, it was a C-stand. It was back in, you know, my beginnings of year one, you know, so that's why I say, but I still wouldn't, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even say use newer for, for, for learning. I would say stay away from it. It's a waste of money. It just is. I'm sorry, but it is. Uh, the C-stands are just big. They're clunky. They're heavy. It's like the heaviest C-stand I've ever used. It's in the bottom of my C-stand rack in the van. It just lives in the bottom. It's like, that's the last one, man. If you really need that, bring it out. It's heinous. It's atrocious. It looks weird. It doesn't work properly. It's not standard, right? It's just 
it's all they're all over the map all right and i just think like you're gonna drop your money into that company and you're gonna regret it almost immediately and it's gonna be something where just don't waste your time and energy and money on right so again i apologize uh I, it's not i'm not out to like throw companies under the bus i'm just sharing my opinion here right it from a low budget diy indie filmmaking like status right uh and i, I so for those reasons anywhere you're going in the fourth slot Okay, so now we're gonna bounce from Neewer to Port Keys. And a lot of people would even argue, they would maybe say Port Keys is not a budget-friendly option, but I don't know, I would disagree with that. To me, I think Port Keys is the perfect poor man's small HD, right? I would just label them as that. You know, if we go back to a couple, what was it last Christmas, I guess? And at the same time, I was ordering the small HD 503 Ultra Bright, the uh, Port Keys reached out to me. I'd never heard of Port Keys before. What is Port Keys? I'd never heard of it. They reached out to me, they just, they decided to send me the BM5, right? So they sent me that and I, I was one of the first guys to get it. I was checking it out. It's an awesome monitor, but it was literally, I kept even saying it in that original review video. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link down in the description below. But I was even saying in that, I'm like, it is exactly, it has everything that the 503 Ultra Bright has. It's even built like it. I mean, I was like, I was like, whoa, this is crazy to me. And it actually, it, it's a pretty stellar unit. I think Porky's is really solid stuff. They've continued to send me a few things, right? They, they send me, the, the reps that work for them are really awesome. Everybody's really cool there. Really good customer service. Yeah, I think they're a really awesome, solid company. However, all of their products that I've used, there's just something not quite there for me. And a lot of it, guys, is the construction, the, the build quality right? On my BM5, things started going south quite quickly. Um, only after using it for about three months, maybe like two to three months, maybe not even a full two months. And things just started happening with the unit, right? I'm talking about things like dead pixels and, you know, quarter 20s uh, just falling out, like just stuff like quality control type stuff, right? And for those reasons alone, port keys just aren't going to quite make it to that number one slot. Uh, so for those reasons, I'm sorry, port keys, we have a really good relationship. I love your company, but I'm just, I don't think your products are 100%. Not yet, not yet. So for those reasons alone, I am going to drop it in the does it last category. And that's probably the end of Porky's ever sending me anything ever, ever again. <laughs> no, no, no. They're really cool. They know I'm, I think they get me, right? They're one of those, they're, they are one of the few companies that get me and they appreciate my honesty. And Andy Sinney is the same, actually. Andy Sinney's reps have even reached out to me via email and, and written to me and told me that they enjoy how honest I am with their products. And I think Porky's would, would, would agree with that. Okay, now here comes a good one. Now we're going to talk about small rig. If you guys have been on the channel for a while, even since the beginning, literally my first video that I put out on YouTube back on December 29th of 2018 was all about small rig. It was literally, that's the whole point of why I started doing YouTube, to show how small rig allows you to make awesome low budge DIY cinema cameras. And back then I had the GH5, right? So we saw that back then. I have always been a huge fan of small rig since day one. Little caveat, they've never reached out to me. They've never sent me anything. I'm just a legit fan of small rig. And in my opinion, they are the poor man's wooden camera, right? Wooden camera, I love wooden camera. I love you guys. I have wooden camera products. It's actually, they're on the camera right now, but I just would never put wooden camera in a low budge option. Uh, now, if you're comparing it to Panavision, well, yeah, wooden camera is the poor man's Panavision, whereas small rig is the poor man's wooden camera. So it's going down the line. But I think you're getting uh, a little sneak of what I'm about to say. Small rig is definitely in the van. It's always in the van. Their stuff is everywhere. I have it all over my AKS. It's all over my grip case. It's everywhere. I love small rig. I can't get enough of it. It's in what's great about small rig products is you, you usually don't resell it. Even if you find out like, ah, oh, I bought the wrong thing or, ah, oh, this isn't working like I wanted it to, you just keep it anyways, right? It's, it's just like Legos. You just keep it, right? Um, so I love it. I love small rig. It's in the van. It's always in the van. They're going in the number one slot. Okay, so next is Soonwell. Now, Soonwell is an interesting one. Um, they make batteries. I mean, that's how I know them. They, they started sending me their, their V-mount batteries, but they make other products too. Like they have that really interesting battery handle grip that I've seen people use for like the Pocket 6K and Pocket 4K. And I think people would make it for the, I mean, I think it can be used with most cameras. Uh, it looks really interesting, right? So they make a lot of cool products for power, but I'm pretty sure they have other products as well. Um, so I can only speak uh, to their batteries but I think they're a solid company. The B98 V-mount batteries I'm talking about, those batteries are my favorite V-mount batteries. Um, the, the, the size is just right. You know, it's not too small, it's not too big. It's a 98 watt hour battery. It has two D-taps and one USB in the battery. Now, usually when you find batteries, 
they'll either have like the most I've seen is like one DTAP, one USB. But the fact that you get that extra P tap, that's pretty cool. And I use them all the time. I haven't had any problems with those Sunwell V mounts. Um, they they have the same amount of recharge time. They charge up really fast. Uh, they la it's not like you know the battery. I haven't noticed dying over time. I've had it for probably uh, definitely over a year and a half now. I shoot every day. If I'm not on a real gig getting paid, then we're doing a passion project. And if it's not one of those two things, then I'm here in the home studio testing out something. You know, doing something in here. Uh, I just am, I'm always tinkering, right? So I'm using batteries all day, every day. And the Sunwell is staying up there with the best of them. So for those reasons, it's in the van, it's always in the AKS. It's a, And actually those B98 Sunwells are always, that's, that's always the first V-mount battery I grab. I have a lot of, kind of a large collection of different V-mount batteries. Uh, I even have some Core SWX batteries. Uh, I, I wouldn't place Core SWX in a budget-friendly uh, video like this. Uh, and soon, well, I grab before I grab those Core batteries. So, sorry, Core, it's nothing against you. It's just, I don't know why I love those Soonwell B98 batteries a lot. So, for those reasons, they're going in the number one slot in the van. So this next company I wanted to include because if you guys have been on the channel for a minute, you know I'm really big into filtration. I love filters, specifically, you know, square filters, you know, industry standard filters. And I wanted to include this company because we haven't really talked about, you know, budget-friendly options for filters. And it's K-Vision. I think I'm saying that right. K-Vision. Uh, if not, I apologize. But um, I have used their filters. We have seen uh, what they do here. I've tested them out against other filters. Um, and the K-Vision neutral density filters are pretty damn good. They are pretty clean, all things considered, especially for the price. I am always like, I was impressed. Um, I kind of regret selling the K-Vision filters that I had. Um, but again, you know, so you see where we're going here. It's not gonna quite make it to that number one tier. I have to put K-Vision in the does it last category or that, um, you know, not quite 100 category. So they're going in slot number two. But the reason is, is because they're just not, uh, I'm, I'm going to be a little um, uh, prudish here, but they're just not known, right? Let's just say that. They're not known in the higher groups, right? People don't, it's, 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 they don't have a big enough reputation, let's be honest. And when it comes to filters, that matters to me. I'm sorry, but it does because there's a reason for that, right? To me, there's a reason for why is their reputation not bigger in the big scheme, all right? So for me, my filter box is really only full of three filters. That's Schneider, Tiffin, and Firecrest. Those are it for me. Those to me are the best of the best. Those are the top three filter companies. And I really don't like to mess with anything else. And I'll tell you why, because it's glass going in front of your lens, right? So it's like, I don't wanna put anything in front of my $2,000 lens that's gonna make it look like a $50 lens. I just don't wanna do that, right? So that's the main reason why. Um, however, the, again, I cannot lie, those K-Vision neutral density filters are solid. If you're looking for good, you know, like your first little kit of square neutral density filters, they're clean. All For all things considered, they're clean filters. For those reasons, I'm putting K-Vision in the number two slot. Does it, does it last slash not quite 100, right? But yeah, I think they're great for just starting out. Now, some people would say, well, if it's great for just starting out, why not put them in the number three slot for learning? And that's because it's better than that. It's better than just like for, for film students, right? It is. You could, I, I would say, don't hold me to it, but I would say, because I have, because, you know, back when I had to, I would say take K-Vision neutral density filters on a paid job with you. You're not going to be disappointed by that, by that thought process, right? Okay, so the next one is Falcon Eyes. Now, I first found out about Falcon Eyes from John Schweigart. If you guys remember back, I think in the first year of the YouTube, he was here on the channel. We did like a four-part series with him. He's one of my favorite working DPs here in LA. I met him back when I was an actor, and then when I directed and produced a couple films, both on Amazon Prime, links down in the description below, um, he was, you know, I hired him. He, I, knew, I knew him from my acting world. I did a mini-series for Hulu, and he was the DP on it. So, um, he's the one that told me about Falcon Eyes because I was like, man, I want an awesome light mat. And he was like, and, and but light mat, light mat's an expensive company, right? Especially when you're in your first or second year. And then I noticed that other gaffers and DPs are aware of Falcon Eyes. Like turns out Falcon Eyes is a pretty solid company. And wouldn't you know it, they sent me some of their LED RGB panels and they're awesome little panels. And everything I've seen on their light mats, their RGB little light, I mean, they are solid, solid fixtures. Um, I do still use their LED panels. 
um, and I do still, I've had one of their like $500 RGB light mats. I've had it in my shopping list for quite some time. I just haven't quite pulled the trigger on it. But based on what I know and what I've used to Falcon Eyes, I would say yes, throw it in the van. I think they are a good company, a reputable company. They have solid color on their lights. And if Godox can go in the number one tier, then you better bet your ass Falcon Eyes can. And the next one is a lighting company as well. And it's GVM, otherwise known as Great Video Makers. Um, they've sent me their products. Um, when I was first starting out, literally they're like one of the first, you know, I was buying LED panels made by GVM. I mean, they, they run amok on Amazon, right? Um, now, we don't have anything in the number three slot. And I just think that's really interesting because I think GVM LED, any anything GVM makes, I think is perfect for student filmmakers. Or if you're just starting out or you need to learn and you just want to start practicing your lighting, why not, right? But just keep in mind that you're not going to be using those two or three years from now, right? Um, but I do think they're solid enough units to, to, to use and, and just try out and learn. And hey, you know, back in my first year, I had GVM on jobs I was getting paid for. I'm not going to lie, right? Um, but I don't, I don't use their... I mean, I do have one of their little LED RGB panels that they sent to me. It's really awesome stuff for learning, right? So congratulations to great video makers. They're the first ones to land in that number three slot for learning. The last company is Nicey Rig. Now I definitely could not walk away doing a video like this and not talk about Nicey Rig. They are definitely the biggest competitor to Small Rig. You know, Camvate's up there, but Nicey Rig is more closer to them. And man, you know, Nicey Rig make good stuff as well, but I can't put them in the number one slot either. And the biggest reason is, is because a lot of their stuff isn't standard, right? It doesn't play well with small rig parts. And also, now that I'm thinking of it, Camvate does not play well at all with small rig either. And actually, while I'm sitting here comparing Camvate to Nicey Rig, because I'm about to throw Nicey Rig into the number two slot, and then I'm thinking, it doesn't make sense Camvate is in that same slot either, because to me, I would always choose a Nicey Rig product over a Camvate product. So for those reasons, I'm actually going to demote Camvate and drop them down into the for learning number three category. Uh, and that's just because I'm just sitting here thinking like, boy, if I had walked up to a, to a case, like an AKS case, and I saw a Camvate product or a Nicey Rig product, I would probably reach for the Nicey Rig product. No offense to either of those companies. I don't have any affiliation with either of those companies. None of them have ever asked me to check out any of their stuff, so it's nothing about that. It's just based on stuff that I've purchased from both those companies and that I've used. Um, I definitely still use them on day-to-day -day jobs. I have Camvate dog bones for my shoulder rig mount, but Man, those rosettes, the little rosette plates go loose almost daily on the dock. I was having to take a little baby eyeglass screwdriver and retighten those little airy plates. So it's just little things like that that make me say, you know what, on second thought, Camvate, you're going to go in the for learning category because I just, you know, as soon as I can get away from that, I would just rather spend more money and get the small rig part. I'm not going to lie. But if you can't quite make it there, then reach for the nicey rig because they're going to go in that number two slot of good but not quite 100%. Here we go. Let's just do a quick rundown here of this low budge tier list here. So in the van, stuff that I sign off on 100%, number one best low budge companies, in my opinion, Axoon, Godox, Kupo, Nanlite, Small Rig, Soonwell, and Falcon Eyes. I stand true to that. And then in the second slot, just under them, companies that aren't quite there. They're just not quite hitting that 100% on the grade scale. But, you know, maybe some of them give them a 95. Hell, maybe even a 98. Port Keys, I'm looking at you. I'd give, I'd give Port Keys a 98%, just not that 100 though. So in that second category, we have Nicey Rig, Foca, Hollyland, Andy Cine, Port Keys, and K Vision. And then in our third slot here, just for learning things that eh, are just, they're cool, they're affordable, but they're not for the long, they're not an investment, right? That's just a straight up crap, you know, smash and grab, right? And that's GVM, Great Video Makers, and Camvate. And then finally, the last tier, the lowest of the dog companies that I would say, sorry again in advance, but I would stay away from them. Just don't waste your time, energy, and money on and that's going to be Celine's and Niwer. Okay, folks, so that is going to do it. Thank you so much for watching. I, I can't wait to see the, the interesting comments you leave down behind, and especially if you have uh, some other low-budge companies. I mean, obviously, I mentioned Feel World in the intro, but if there's any other companies that I left behind, um, surely I'm sure there's even ones that I have here on the cart or something that I, I definitely have failed to mention. Just That's just because for lack of remembering, right? But certainly, you know, leave it down in the comments. Let me know what you guys are reaching for for your low-budget options, or maybe if one 
one of these you feel like that's not that's not fair. So let let us know. Let it be known. Uh, you know, keep it keep it um, mature though. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, if you're new here, I would encourage you to tap that subscribe button, and uh, we'll see you next week.